What's up everybody, Unrested here, and I'm here to tell you a little bit today about how not to interview in Japan. As I walk around a tad bit behind some love hotels right here, if you don't know what a love hotel is, it's a hotel you can rent by the hour or rent for a specific set of hours to do the dirty dirty. That's right. Anyway guys, let me jump right in here with uh, one of my first little things about how not to interview in Japan. The stories I'm going to tell you tonight are four kind of funny stories and uh, if I can remember all four, I don't know if I remember the list, I didn't write it down and I didn't bring it with me, which is bad videographing. Um, and these are just kind of comical stories about a couple people either I interviewed myself or saw interviewed or heard about being interviewed by a friend or have a story from a story of a friend of a friend that is about some kind of crazy kooky interview. And um, our first one starts out with uh, a school I worked at for a very short time before I quit literally because uh, they actually weren't paying their paychecks on time and after having dealt with that with uh, Nova, that wasn't something I really put up with very quickly or uh, very long at all before I would uh, head on out because if someone's not paying you on time, you should do the same. Anyway, there was one guy who came to that school to interview and I remember being quite surprised that they chose him to interview because they had to pay, I think, something like 120 bucks for him to come by Shinkansen from Tokyo, which is uh, kind of a huge risk to take. I don't know why exactly they did that at the same time they couldn't pay their paychecks on time seems like they had their priorities wrong um, but this guy came in uh, first of all he was a little bit too wacky um, now when you come to an interview in Japan especially if you're going to teach for kids it's good to be Genki don't get me wrong And if you don't know what Genki means it just means kind of like upbeat and uh, you know smile on your face pep in your step a little bit of all that to make yourself look like an energy-filled teacher. No one wants the doldrums of teaching to come interview with them. So I guess this guy was doing that, but on a whole new level of super Genki. Um, like way too excited Genki. I was like to the point of being like overly hyperactive, but at the same time he was like 40 years old. So imagine like a 40-year-old man that was like super hyperactive. Um, and when he got in there, he pretty much was given the chance to teach a demo lesson. Uh, now if you teach a demo lesson, my suggestion to you is to come in with a lesson plan in mind. If you can, find out the age of the kids you're going to teach before you come in with your lesson so that you can have it part up with the age and learning capacity, especially if it's not an international school, if it's just like uh, an advanced after school for kids studying English after either elementary school or kindergarten and uh, you know be ready for their level don't try to do anything too above their heads or too below the level of reading comprehension and speaking ability of the student usually you can ask ahead of time and find that out most employers aren't going to just leave you guessing that would be pretty crazy um, because when you have the job you're going to know anyway so this guy came in and he was teaching I believe four to five year olds um, when we, as soon as we got him in there, he wasn't really ready with any kind of lesson. He just like, before the lesson starts, they have a little bit of a play time. And that's just kind of like while you're waiting for kids to arrive for the lesson. Uh, the whole lesson's about 45 minutes long, but usually allow 15 minutes for everybody to show up so that they can show up late and everything and still be okay and get the full lesson. So he gets in there and we're past the 15 minute play time. We want to see him jump right into the lesson and he doesn't need to teach a full 45 minutes. Usually it's only 15 to 30 minutes. And, uh, he gets in there and he's just like, hey kids, do you like to laugh and stuff? You you want to see something funny? You want to really play around with a goofy guy? And like, so you can say stuff like that and everything. That's cool. But um, I mean, they, they can't really even comprehend all these different words he's saying so quickly and so fast and in complete sentences. I mean, when you come in, usually what you're ready to say is, hello, my name is Scott. Scott. Scott and like I mean like literally you know you got to repeat it unless unless it's like an international kindergarten where they're speaking English every day their comprehension levels way higher but that's not the situation here so that's what he comes in and does and he's just like speaking really fast in these super high-pitched hyper Genki hyper 
uh, excited levels, saying all this stuff to them real fast, like, are you kids really excited to come and learn today? We're gonna go ahead and do a bunch of stuff today. You wanna see a bunch of funny things? Here, let me show you something really funny. And he started grabbing toys off the shelf, just like buckets of toys, like Legos and cards and board games. And he started just like dumping them over his head. Um, just random choice of stuff. And this is like, you know, I don't think you should have to act your age at any point in your life. I'm a 36 year old man who acts like I'm still in my early 20s, so I'm not one to speak about how someone should be more mature with their personality, but this guy, I mean, he was, um, I guess, trying to bring himself down to the level of four to five year old kids? I, I, I don't know. Um, and he just started grabbing stuff and dumping toys over his head and like grabbing cards and throwing them all around the room. And even the kids said, you know, like, me and the owner of the place are the ones interviewing this guy and we're, we're watching him and we just, we just look at each other like, WTF? And even the kids at this point have like stopped playing with the toys and they're just looking at him with this like glazed over look like, whoa, what's going on with this dude? So pretty much right away, um, the owner made the decision in a couple of minutes, um, pulled the guy out of the room and was just like, look, I don't think, uh, your style is really what we're looking for, and uh, that guy didn't get the job. So, let's move on to the next one. Um, this one is told to me uh, by a friend of a friend. It's a pretty short little story. Um, his friend was interviewing another guy for an international kindergarten teacher job, and for the most part it was going totally normal. Um, you know, what are your hobbies, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what do you like to do outside of work? Uh, what kind of stuff have you taught before? And then he reached the question of, and he said like he had totally answered 100% normal with great answers. He was actually already starting to think about he might be a pretty good hire. And then he said, so, uh, what made you wanna leave your last job? And he said, the guy didn't answer. He just did this weird nervous laugh, like kind of like, <laughs> like that. And he was like, uh, I'm sorry. He's, he said in his head he was thinking like, well maybe I, you know, he didn't hear me right, he thought I said a joke or something and tried to laugh uncomfortably or just tried to, you know, say something but mumbled it out instead in a laughter type voice. But he said, okay, I'll just ask him again. I, I think he didn't quite hear me. So why did you leave your last job? And he said again, the guy was like, <laughs> and he was like, um, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Like, why, why did you leave your last job? And again, the guy was just like, <laughs> like that, I'm not joking. Like I. This sounds like it's like some kind of weird, like farcical, comical, whimsical situation, but this is what happened to the guy. And uh, he said he just kind of didn't know what to do with the interview at this point. He was just kind of like, "All right, um, so I guess you, you can't really tell me what you left your last job for." And the guy was just once again like, <laughs> and he was just like, "All, all right, I'll give you a call and let you know uh, what we decide." And of course, yeah, I've never called him back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he just said it was like one of the weirdest kind of interview situations he had ever dealt with. Um, the next one, another kind of short story, but uh, kind of comical at the same time. Uh, this was told to me by my now manager, a very, very relaxed, laid back guy. And his boss, he said, at his last job was also very relaxed and laid back, um, both Australian. And um, he said like, no matter who they interviewed or what the person was like, his boss was always just like really laid back, just kind of like, you know, what are your hobbies? What do you do? How do you like to teach? What's your style? And wasn't too pressured to really, you know, be too harsh on interviews or strict on interviews. But he said this one guy called up and was like, I'm ready to interview for this international kindergarten teaching job. And I promise you're going to like me because I am super ganky. I, I guess there's something about people being too ganky. I mean, don't get me wrong, you need to be ganky when you come to these. You need to smile at the interview. You need to show you have the energy for little kids. But this guy came in apparently wearing roller skates and he roller skated into the interview and showed up roller skating in, like kind of doing like kind of little spinny tricks and stuff like that and pulled on up to the desk and he said it was the only time he'd ever seen his boss ever get mad. He said the guy pulled up and was like, hey, everybody. And he said his boss was like, hey, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he said that was the only time he'd ever seen his boss just suddenly snap and yell at somebody. He said he just didn't know what this guy was thinking, why you would come into a job and do that. Um, I think this would be ill-advised to do for any job in any country at all, aside from maybe professional roller skater. 
I don't know. Um, one more story just before I end it here. A quick video just to end it on one last Japan interview story. Um, and this was one I read uh, that my friend wrote on his blog one time. Uh, a guy who's lived in Japan for quite a while now, I think like 19 years now. Uh, he came here first for seven years, went back to his own country, came on back and said, you know, just browsed the newspapers, looked at see what they had to offer, and just chose the first job his finger kind of landed on. Didn't really care too much about whether or not he got it. And pretty smooth in inter every interview that he does because he's just so used to the trade and how everything works and what they're looking for. You come in and just nicely tell them what you want and everything like that. But he said as soon as he got into this job, it wasn't during the normal hiring season, so they were like super desperate to hire someone ASAP. And the owner of the company came out and he said, look, I've got you to interview and there's another guy sitting next to you right there. I know this sounds horrible, but I'm gonna interview both of you at the same time because I need to make a snap decision like right now. So if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna interview you face to face right here in my office, both at the same time. And so he hit the first guy up with the questions, my, my friend who wrote the blog, asked him the basic questions. My friend said, it just went like clockwork. You know, you asked like, what have you taught with him in the past? What books have you used? Have you used things like, you know, Let's Speak and books like that, or um, Ego Noto or um, High Friends, which are all classic Japanese based uh, English books, teaching English. and. Um, he just answered those, whether or not he had used those. Most of them he had already used because he had been in this country so long. And the guy was just like, oh, all right, all right, cool, cool. And he's like, I really didn't know at that point if I had the job or not. Um, it seemed like it went pretty smooth and pretty calm. And then he said the guy next to him was like, as soon as his interview finished with the owner of the company, the guy next to him turned and said, I'm sorry, but I really need this job. Are you ready? And he took out a tape recorder in which he had recorded piano on that he had played at home by himself and he hit play on the, the recorder and it started to play this piano piece that he had done and he got up and started to sing and dance like this song that he had made up himself and this dance he had made up himself that was something like synonyms antonyms I both love them and like he said he went on for like 15 minutes singing this weird song he had made up himself and as soon as he finished the owner of the company was just like, all right, thanks so much. Anyway, he turned back to my friend and said, you know, you're hired and uh, you can go ahead and leave. And he said, the guy just couldn't believe it that he hadn't gotten the job even though he had made up this crazy weird song and recorded it on a tape recorder and played it and sang and danced, which it's just totally wacky to even think about. These, these stories I tell you tonight, I, I only believe them and tell them because the, I know the people who were there to witness them and know that what they're telling is the truth. If I didn't know that, I would have a lot of trouble believing these if I just randomly read them on a website. Um, <laughs> believe them whether you want to or not. Um, with the stories that I tell, it doesn't really matter if you, if you do believe them or not. I think these are funny stories to relate to, whether they're real or not or really happen or not. I think um, they're pretty crazy and pretty good examples of how not to interview at any job. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed those stories. I'm unrested with the questions you requested. This is Jay Feck. Have a good one.